I recently ordered some new canvases and I thought it would be an excellent opportunity to show you my entire process for painting with acrylics. In this video, I'm gonna go through exactly what I do from start to finish painting, discussing all of the techniques that I use for acrylic paintings. It's gonna be a big one today. This is gonna be the biggest painting that I've done in a very long time. Amber and I are exhibiting in Manchester Art Fair in November, and we need some new pieces. Oh my God, he's massive. This guy right here is hopefully gonna be one of the big showcase pieces of the exhibit. Right, let's get started with preparing the canvas. The canvas that I'm using has been pre-primed with gesso, but I like to add a couple of extra coats for my more realistic work. Sometimes, even on these pre-primed canvases, the grain can be a little bit much. So the extra gesso and a bit of sanding creates a really nice semi-smooth surface to paint on. I know I want a lion on there and I haven't painted a realistic lion in a long time. I found a fantastic picture of a lion that I'm gonna use as a partial reference. And I'll be using loads of different images of lions to help me paint the fur, the texture, and understand the lighting a little bit better. Now, all I need to do is transfer that idea onto there. For large pieces like this, I just use a projector to get a rough outline of my image onto the canvas. It can be really difficult eyeballing proportions at a larger scale, and gridding takes way too long. For the face of this lion, I am using a reference photo that I found from wildliferefencephotos.com. I really like the character of the lion from this photo, and I'll be using this as a base for my painting, not copying the photo exactly. So you can see that I'm not adding every single line and every single detail with the projector. It is literally just a quick outline just to get the proportions right, to get it where I want it on the canvas. There'll be so much more detail added when I get to the painting stages. I hate working on a plain white canvas. So let's get this canvas toned. Toning the canvas with a neutral colour just helps me to understand the relationship between the lights and the darks a little bit better, so that I can go darker or lighter with the paint that I'm applying to the canvas, rather than with a plain white background, you can only go darker. It just makes mixing colours and adding colours to the canvas so much easier. I always forget to paint the sides of my canvas. It looks so much more professional when you've not got the white edges showing on the finished painting. Usually I make the mistake of waiting till the end of the painting to paint those sides, but I'm not making that mistake this time. I'm not 100% sure how I'm going to frame this piece yet, but if I use a floater frame, similar to the polar bear piece that I showed you a few months ago, Painting the sides black really helps to give the gap between the frame and the painting a really sharp, neat edge. It's a tiny thing, but it just pushes the professional quality of a finished painting. Now that all this prep work's done, we can get cracking with the actual painting. I've started to do a more modified technique with all of my acrylic paintings. Well, actually all of my paintings, really. I like to start with a complete blocking of the painting. No details, just getting a solid opaque base down. Only focusing on those basic colors and the shapes of the structure of the subject. I start this process with the darks. Mapping out the painting like this just makes it easier down the line as all of the main colours and shapes are there, it makes adding the details almost like paint by numbers.
I like using a glass palette for my acrylic paintings because it's so much easier to clean than wood or plastic. I also like to pre-mix all of my colours before I start painting, and I use a Jackson's acrylic retarder that improves the palette life of the paints so that I can use them for weeks before they dry up, as long as they are kept properly. I will leave a link in the description for the retarder I use and a link to the video showing what I do to make those paints last for so long. As I said, this first layer is not about the details, it's just about blocking in colours. And if you'd like to go a little bit more in depth into how I paint lions, I have full real-time video series on the Studio Wildlife Patreon page that goes through the entire process of blocking in, mixing colours, and painting the details of lions. It's not this exact lion, but I use the same colours and the same methods in pretty much all of my lion paintings. I'll leave a link to my Patreon page in the description for you. I just want to say a massive thank you to everyone that supports me on Patreon. I would not be able to do this without you. Wow, that took a lot longer than I expected it would. I think this is where I'm going to leave it today and come back to it fresh tomorrow. I know it doesn't look like much now, but when we get stuck in with those details, hopefully it's going to really start to come to life. Good morning. It's about 8am here and yeah, I think I'm going to get up take a shower and then get started on the details. Something tells me this painting is going to take a long time to finish. I always start with the eyes. If you don't get them right, you just lose the whole vibe of an animal painting. You need that sense of life, the emotion needs to be there, that character needs to be there, otherwise the whole painting just flops. Because I'm going a little bit more off script with the lion, I'm not quite happy with this rough blocking of the mane that I've done and I needed to get an idea of what I wanted that mane to look like. The reference photos that I've been using so far haven't been great for what I envision this painting to be, so I've done a little sketch. Hopefully you can see that, hopefully it'll focus. Hey, not, not much to this sketch, but it's just given me an idea of where I want the main to be and how I want it to look on this bigger piece. I just jump into my paintings. I don't often do preliminary sketches, but for this piece, I wish I had done. So while it's still at this stage and we're still just really with the bare bones of this piece, I've done the sketch so that I've got a better understanding of what I want it to look like. And yeah, let's get to it. A lot of the way that I paint with acrylics involves building up in lots of layers. It's not just paint what I see straight away. I need to build up six or seven layers of paint with varying degrees of detail, varying degrees of colour and values in order to get a finished painting that I'm happy with. This usually involves lots of trial and error and it involves painting over things that I've already put down. Once I've got that initial blocking down, sometimes I will just go straight over the top of it with lots of detail. One of the brushes that I use most frequently for this, especially with lion's manes or long hair, is a sword liner or a dagger brush. But then I'll use other brushes to add variation, soften areas and add different colors and values to areas of the painting. This doesn't just apply to wildlife. I always make sure in all of my paintings that there are lots of different areas. Some areas are really soft and subtle. Some areas are very sharp and detailed. Hello, it's a new day today. I'm gonna to take a crack at the rest of this lion's mane. I didn't really film much of the lion's mane because 
I've been struggling with it, if I'm being very honest. I'm not really working from a reference photo with the mane. I've got a couple of different references, but I wanted to construct something entirely new and different. And it's taken me a long time, an entire day, to get to this sort of midpoint with the mane that I'm actually happy with. This side has actually been six or seven layers of painting mane and then getting rid of it and then starting again before I sort of got into a bit of a groove. And then this side, once I'd got into that groove, this side was pretty easy and pretty quick. It's still not exactly as I want it. There's still a lot of work to do on the main. So today's job is going to be get the rest of the main done, this top part of the head and the ears to the same level as the main that I painted yesterday. And then we'll see where we're at and go from there. I'm often asked what brand of acrylic paint I use. I don't really have a favorite brand of paint and I'm not sponsored yet. So it doesn't really matter what I'm using for this painting, but I can tell you this, do not cheap out on paints. As a beginner, it's so much easier to make good work with decent quality paints. I'm not saying you can't make really great paintings with cheaper paints, because you can, but it's way more difficult and it takes way longer. Cheaper paints require more layers and a much greater quantity of paint per piece. So it might seem like you're saving money, but more expensive paints will last much longer and make way more paintings. The brush brands aren't super important either, as I use a whole range of brushes in my work, too many to list. However, I was awarded a voucher for Rosemary and Co brushes and ordered a set, and they are a really good quality brush. If you are looking for some more professional brushes, then I would recommend checking them out. I'm actually finding it quite difficult to paint on such a big canvas. I mean, I love painting big, but it does get really uncomfortable sometimes and it's really important to stretch and take breaks. Plus, details on paintings like this take forever. It's not necessarily about painting every single strand either, but I like to make the brushwork look good up close and at a distance. Although, realistically, I probably don't need to spend as much of my time on that up-close brushwork. I mean, I'm pretty sure it's only me getting their face this close to the painting. The main has taken me absolutely ages. I think this is actually day six of painting this piece, probably about six or seven hours every day. I am a little bit happier with the main as it is today. It's not completely finished. There's still a lot of work yet to do on the main, but for now, I'm gonna move on to the face and try and get it to the same level as the rest of the painting, and then go from there. I'm trying to train myself to step back away from the picture a little bit more often, try to not spend as much time focusing on those tiny, tiny details. But that doesn't mean I want to create a realistic painting that only looks good from miles away or on a tiny screen. I still want it looking awesome in person up close too. I am constantly trying to improve my work, and I'm the kind of person that finishes a painting and five minutes later, I'm already thinking, right, what did I learn? And how can I use that to improve my next artwork? And I think it's that drive to continue to grow as an artist and try to be better that's constantly pushing me forwards. I don't think I'll ever be satisfied where I'm at. I just want to grow and grow and grow. And that just takes time. So much time. You know, one painting at a time, one drawing at a time. I mean, even if you watched my older videos when I started this channel, I've gotten so much better, or at least I think I have, than some of the stuff that I was releasing back then. And I just can't wait to see the art that I'm making in like five or ten years from now.
Okay, that is it for this layer. There's still so much to do. I'm gonna let this dry and then I'm gonna airbrush some color glazes over the lion's face so that it matches the mane. And then it's onto the really tiny details. I didn't film the airbrush step because I had to do it outside, the light was a little bit rubbish, and I didn't want to injure myself with airbrush paint fumes just for a YouTube video. The vast majority of the final layer of the piece is done with a small number zero detail brush. I'm not putting these tiny details all over the painting. I'm trying to stick to the focal point, the bits of the painting that I want the viewer to look at the most. In this case, it's the eyes and the nose that I want the viewer to be drawn to first of all. These are the parts of the picture that are the closest to the viewer, so I want them to be the most detailed, the sharpest and the most in focus. Choosing a specific focal point that guides your viewer around your picture is really important with any painting, whether it's wildlife like this, portraits, landscapes, still lifes. Having that focal point is a really, really important thing. I'd recommend deciding on your focal point before you even start painting. One of the most important things that I've learned since becoming a full-time artist, and it's only been about six months, is that I need to take much more care with the idea and the thought behind my paintings. I need to spend more time thinking thinking about who I want the painting to be for, the colour schemes, the compositions, where in a room it's going to go, what kind of room I want it to go in. There's loads of different things that I didn't realise play a massive part in making sellable artwork. So far, I've just been painting whatever I want to, but in the last six months, since becoming a professional artist, I have realised that having a plan is one of the biggest things that you can do to improve your artwork and increase how quickly your art sells. But there's too much to talk about in this video about creating sellable artwork, so I will do another video explaining all of the things that I've learned in my 10 years as an artist. So make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on that, because that video is going to have so much useful information. I realise that not everyone has the wall space big enough for a piece like this, which is why I have released a set of prints that are perfect for any wall. And you can head over to studiowildlife.com to get yours now. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about my technique for realistic acrylic paintings, then check out this video here. I'll leave a link in the description too. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.